90% of students are now using AI in their daily studies. Yes, the whole AI landscape is so confusing. Even for someone like me who took machine learning classes at Columbia University the same year ChatGPT released. So over the past month, I've gone deep. Testing AI tools, taking courses, reading research, and getting totally obsessed with the topic. In this video, I'm breaking it all down. How is AI changing the way we learn? Is using AI cheating? Is it harming our thinking ability? Is AI the death of education? You will get a clear and accurate actionable roadmap for using AI to learn more effectively and figure out how to not just survive, but thrive in the new age of learning. Right now, I feel like the main challenges of using AI to learn really just comes down to two things. First, I feel overwhelmed and confused by the constant flood of new AI tools and updates. I just don't know which one to trust and how to keep up. And second, learning to use AI tools can be frustrating. They often don't work the way I expect. To tackle these challenges, I first had to have a basic understanding of what is this new wave of AI technology all about? So AI has been around for decades. Traditional AI powers things like fraud detection, search engine, and Google recommendation. It usually classifies or retrieves existing information. For example, Hi AI, what is this? Let me look at its face, its ears. Based on all the data I have, there is a 2% chance it's a bird, a 5% chance it's a dog, and 92% of chance it's a cat. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's a cat. What's significant about this new wave of technology is the rise of generated AI. A type of AI that can create original content, like text, images, audios, video, like... Hi AI, can you give me an image of a cat? Yeah, I have just analyzed what you said and based on all I learned, I have created this image of cat for you. So AI is a broad field and within it, there is a subfield called machine learning. It's just like math is a broad field and geometry is just one subfield inside of it. And generative AI is actually a subfield inside of machine learning. And one of the most impactful form of generative AI is large language models. Tools like ChatGPT, Google Gemini are all LLM. It's been more than two years since ChatGPT came out. I feel like the initial excitement just chatting with the AI and exploring what it can do already passed. Now I'm seeing everywhere ads and feeds like I use AI to learn 300 pages of material in one night or I made a million dollars using AI just in a month. ChatGPT, Google Gemini, now DeepSeek, they're coming out new versions like crazy. And there are so many learning apps popping up. It's very incredible and cool to see all this happening, but it's just a mess to me. I'm overwhelmed and confused. Honestly, I have a little bit of fear of being left behind. So to tackle that, I looked into and organized all the ways students are using AI to learn. Surprisingly, it's pretty much covered all aspects of learning. Let's start with the most common ones. Most students have used AI in these ways before. Information retrieval, answer questions, and pull insights from big data. Some tools can cite sources for higher accuracy. Brainstorming. For essays, projects, AI can help spark ideas and generate drafts. And there are tools can make full presentations with text and images. Writing. AI is really good with writing. Support every stage, outlining, rewarding, grammar, flow, and feedback. Note-taking and summarizing. AI can summarize readings, organize notes, and even transcribe lectures to match your slides. We also have some may not be as common. Let's see if you heard of them before. Practice. You can upload your study materials to generate practice questions or mock exams with great feedback and clear explanations. Format conversion. AI can and turn text into audio, videos into notes, or documents into mind maps. And I love to turn my reading materials into podcasts so I can listen to it while I'm walking and driving. Memorization. You can upload your study materials to get smart flashcards with space repetition or memory palace tools to help you memorize better. Time management. Plan your schedule, track progress, and automate boring tasks. Tutors and learning coaches. Their AI tutors can explain tricky ideas, answer all your questions, quiz you and motivate you whenever you need. With all the different ways we learned I mentioned earlier, I can make it clearer by placing these methods on a spectrum from creative to accurate. For example, when I'm doing information retrieval, like writing a paper or searching for a scientific data, I need tools that are highly accurate. But for brainstorming, it's more about creativity and generating new ideas. There's not really a wrong answer technically. So depending on the task, be mindful of how much accuracy you need. And if it really requires precision, always double check the AI's output 
cook before using it. There's so many tools and one of the biggest challenges I run into is I don't know which one to pick. To understand that, we first need to understand how those AI tools work. So our brains are made up of over 10 billion neurons, which forms a giant network that helps us to process information. This allows us to reason, interact, and respond to the world. Inspired by this, scientists developed artificial neural network that mimics our brain's function. So when you type something like cats are, the model converts that text into numbers, processes through multiple layers of the neural network, and predict a likely next word. And it continuously feeds its own output back in, so it will have the next word predicted. So the models can generate entire sentences or paragraphs. So the idea is actually pretty simple. It just keeps predicting the next word. And when you do it over and over again, something magical happened. It just sounds like human. They didn't know that was going to happen, but it worked and it was amazing. One of the things that helped me understand AI better and use it more creatively was taking classes on Skillshare, which also happens to be this video's sponsor. Through this class, Make AI Work For You, I learned the creative workflow, tools, and prompts to create really great AI images. So this video's thumbnail is actually made using AI. I hope you like it. So Skillshare is this amazing platform that you pretty much can learn anything created from art and design to photography, productivity, and so much more. The classes are taught by world-level creatives, so you're directly learning from the real super talented, successful professionals. If you're a student, I highly recommend this class, How to Ace Your Exams, The Method to Mastery by doctors and YouTubers Mike and Matty. It's packed with science-backed study strategies, from planning and choosing the right study materials to test-taking techniques. It's super, super practical and comprehensive. If you're like me, just love learning new things and always trying to invest in your own growth, I highly recommend checking it out. Skillshare offers a 7-day free trial and a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it out risk-free. And the first 500 people use the link in my description or scan this QR code will get a 20% off on their first year of Skillshare. So get started today and thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. How they're able to make those predictions is through training. You feed the model a lot, a lot of text and data. So the model are kind of just watching all of those data and text you send them and kind of just recognizing the patterns and learn by itself. Kind of like baby that are learning to talk the first time, the baby just sit there and kind of watch and listen. And that's how large language models like ChatGPT work. It's a next word prediction model that can generate content that sounds like human based on the things they learned from data sets. Now there are so many large language models out there like ChatGPT, Cloud, Gemini, DeepSeek, but it's a bit hard to compare them and say which one is better. Trust me, I really look and was hoping to found a way that can compare them and see which one is better. The answer was kind of disappointing because the field is evolving quickly and there's no standard way to compare them yet. Right now, matrix like training data size are all we have, but that's like judging which kid is smarter based on how much books they have read. It might give you an idea, but not really. A more useful method we are all familiar with, which is testing. I did not know that actually that's the best way to compare the models right now. You can give all the apps a set of questions and just see their answers, which one you think is better. And there are lots of review articles online have done that as well. Beyond the basic large language models we just talked about, which are designed to be all-purposed, you can also train models for very specific purposes. There are lots of companies are doing a secondary training using the existing large language models, kind of like a student's already completed their general education and now you can just take those students and give them like more specific training like grad school and turning them into an expert. For example, Notion has a Notion AI feature which helps you writing and summarizing and Khan Academy also uses ChatGPT to have their AI tutor, Khan Amigo. Lots of the AI education apps are still startups and they're still in the developing experimenting phase. So lots of time uh, what you choose to use really comes down to your personal 
personal preference. So here's what I recommend. You can identify what are your specific needs or problems in your life right now. Is there something you want to improve or save time on? And then explore a few tools that kind of have that features for you. Pick the one you like the best and stick with it and practice. Now, after I have a basic understanding of AI and what are the tools available, the next challenge is actually using them, which can come with like a learning curve or frustrations. Hey, can you run me an essay on renewable energy solutions? Renewable energy and drives from natural to professional. Try again. Hey friend, have you ever thought about where energy came from? Sounds more human. You sound like AI. But, but I am AI. I looked into it and I did not know there's an entire field dedicated to this problem called prompt engineering. It focuses on how to communicate with AI tools better and get the results that you want. After analyzing millions of results, Google discovered that the most successful prompts are 21 words on average. Yet, most of us are inputting fewer than 9 words in ChatGPT. I feel very caught out after seeing this because the most frequent prompts that I use is just fix this. I've been wanting to tell you that you should really work on your prompting skills. A successful prompt generally follows a structured format, combining key elements like task, context, sampler, persona, format, and tone. Of course, you don't need to include all of these elements every time you write a prompt. The more you incorporate them, the more you will improve the quality and relevance of the response you get from ChatGPT. And here are some other prompting tips that I found very useful. Number one, most people don't use the regenerate feature in ChatGPT. To save time and get variety, Google recommends asking for three variations in your initial prompt. For example, give me three different 10-minute study routines for learning new biology terms. Two, breaking a big task into smaller steps. This will improve the results by reducing errors and making responses more focused. For example, instead of just ask, help me understand the water cycle. Break it down, ask, give me a simple explanation of water cycle first, then create a diagram description I can visualize and quiz me with three multiple choice questions. Three, one of the easiest way to boost productivity is to reduce the friction. So just save a set of to-go prompts in your notes app so you can always just use them without wasting time. When using AI, it's important to aware of its limitations. The data used to those models can be biased or incomplete. Think about if you ask a kid who had never seen a panda in their life to name an animal that's black and white. If they don't know panda exists, they won't include it in their answer even though it's kind of the most straightforward one from our human perspective. AI yeah, can generate very confident sounding but factual wrong answers because as we discussed earlier, it's really just a next word prediction system. So with these limitations in mind, we should kind of treat AI as our knowledgeable and creative friend. It's very helpful to talk to them, but they might be biased or wrong sometimes. If you're working on something that requires high accuracy, always, always double check your answer. Now we know what AI is and how can we use it more effectively. Let's not forget it's a very controversial topic right now. People keep saying AI is the death of education. So I did a whole bunch of research and here's what I discovered. This whole debate and mess around AI in education really just comes down to two questions. One, is AI cheating? And two, is AI hurting our thinking skills? The most concerns from educators are that AI helps students cheat. Yes, of course, it's a very valid concern. You can just ask AI any questions you're working on and it will just give you an answer. What I didn't realize and kind of surprised by is not only the educators, but students themselves consider using AI is cheating. In a large survey for over a thousand teens, 44% said they are likely to use ChatGPT for their homework. 60% of them viewed it's cheating. It really raises a question for me, what exactly count as cheating? If asking AI for help is cheating, does asking your parents for help count as cheating? What about asking a tutor or even your teacher? Stanford researchers found that the data that doesn't show there is an increase of cheating due to AI. After ChatGPT came out, high school cheating rates remained the same, around 60 to 70 percent. I'm not only surprised by AI didn't help cheating, Cheating increase, but also surprised by 60 to 70% is a high rate of cheating. That's kind of crazy. So what they found out is cheating is more closely tied to academic pressure and stress than access to technology. And in fact, most students are using ChatGPT as a start point, a useful tool for their homework, and not a way to cheat. So in other words, ChatGPT and AI might have changed the way students cheat, but they did not 
increase or promote cheating. So in my opinion, AI, it's just like any other tool. It really comes down to your intention and how you use it. We're at a point that technology has completely revolutionized education, but the systems and rules might have not caught up yet. A lot of schools don't know what to do about it, so they just decided to ban it altogether. So the Stanford researchers suggested instead of banning AI, schools should focus on supporting students and teaching them how to use AI responsibly. And the second concern is AI is hurting our thinking ability. I also looked into this. However, there is just not real evidence support this statement. There is a couple articles here and there did a little bit of research and saying that overusing AI might hurt our critical thinking ability due to cognitive offloading. I don't think those are super well done research. And cognitive offloading basically means that you do fewer decisions and let other people or other tools to do the decisions for you. And that actually can be extremely beneficial in our society because we're almost stimulated all the time, which also have its own downside, which is if you overdo it, you no longer have the critical thinking skills. I just don't think there are enough evidence to prove either point. We really don't know if using AI can hurt our thinking abilities. Part of the reason might be AI is just so new and everybody haven't fully integrating AI in their lives yet. So we'll see about that maybe in 10 years or 20 years and see how that goes. When we look at the history of learning from the invention of writings in school to the printing press so more people can get access to books and now the internet, each stage has accelerated how we access and share knowledge. With AI, we're starting a new era. This is the Two Sigma problem. Research shows that one-on-one -on -one tutoring significantly improved the academic result compared to traditional one teacher in a group of students classroom setting. So it's always been a goal that more students can get access to one-on-one -on -one tutoring, but it's never been scalable due to cost and everything until now. AI tutors really have the potential to bring a very personalized level of tutor to everyone. Isn't that just so awesome? And looking ahead at McKinsey report suggested by 2030, 30% 30 of current US job will be automated and 60% will significantly be altered by AI tools. So I don't think using AI and understanding AI is optional now. It's really, really essential whether we're improving how we learn or preparing for a job tomorrow, we really should embrace AI with curiosity and responsibility. Based on this education report, 73% of students are expecting universities to provide more AI trainings for both the faculties and students, like offer more AI literacy courses and integrating AI into teaching and learning. A new technology has been born and we really cannot stop it to rise. What matters is how we choose to use it, shape it, and guide its rule in our lives. Personally, I feel so excited and lucky to witness this moment of history. We're truly standing in the middle of something huge happening. And it's so cool to be able to be part of promote its responsible use. If you watched until this point, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm really loving this format that I pick a specific topic and really dig deep in it. If you have any other ideas, leave it in the comment. Check out Skillshare. They have so many quality courses. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. The entire time I'm filming, Nunu is just in this her little box. Sleeping. Yes, Nunu. How was sleep? Free audio post production by Alphonic.com.